This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Perfect chicken cutlets make a perfect chicken parmesan wedge. And that's what we're making today. Now for those of you who don't know, a chicken cutlet is the same as a chicken milanese or something made in the style of milanese, which in Italian basically means a thin piece of meat dredged in flour and egg and breaded and fried. It's obviously and undeniably delicious and it's one of my favorite things to eat, whether it's plain on their own or in this case in sandwiches. And in sandwiches, I'm of the personal opinion that the thinner they are, the better. It's easier to bite through, they're almost always more tender, and in my opinion, they're better in every way possible. So today we're gonna go over how to make perfect thin chicken cutlets so that we can use them to make perfect chicken parm wedges, which is actually the term in Westchester that we refer to as a hero or a hoagie or a grinder or a sub, depending on where you come from. So I'm gonna refer to it as a wedge in this video. I'm sure I'll hear about it in the comments, but anyway, if that all sounds good to you, let's just jump right into it. Now the first step to making thin chicken cutlets is figuring out how to get the chickens thin in the first place. Now as far as quantities, one chicken breast is essentially gonna be enough to cater to one sandwich. A chicken breast this size is probably going to yield anywhere from three to four thin slices if we can do it properly. Better to do them when they're cold, slightly frozen might be a good idea, but we can still get it done assuming we have the right knife. Now I've got here a fillet knife and a boning knife. You can see they're slightly different, both flexible knives. Both of them will do this job well. I like to have both. They're pretty interchangeable, but the main characteristic that we're looking for for this purpose is how thin the blade is. I use thin blades like these when I'm trying to slice like a ribeye thinly for cheese steaks, or in this case, to get thin slices on a chicken. So I think it's important to have at least one of these, if not both. These are relatively cheap, like all the Victoria Knox knives, and they're good blades. So they're down in my Amazon store, link down in the description. Now we need to keep things sanitary. Now this is a thin piece. I can maybe get a small one off the top, and then maybe I can get three out of this one. So what I wanna do is bring it close to me, towards the edge of the counter, starting with the thick side to my dominant side. I'm gonna get down and I'm gonna measure, and just try and go as thin as possible, and very carefully use long strokes, and slice small pieces. We're gonna start with one like that. Now that's gonna to start to even out the chicken, so we're gonna get incrementally larger slices as we go down. Now your hand's obviously in a dangerous situation, so just go really slow, start and stop, adjust your hand, just make sure you're in a good, safe position, and the knife's not gonna slip up and cut you. The more you do this, the thinner you can get, but if it's a little too thick for you, you can always use your fist and just sort of pound it out slightly thinner. Just don't go too hard. You don't want to tear the chicken. So now here, I've got a mix of homemade breadcrumbs, store-bought breadcrumbs, and some panko. Sometimes I don't have bread, sometimes I need store-bought. In the end, I just end up mixing them all together. But whatever it is, I like the mix to be fine breadcrumbs with coarse breadcrumbs, whether it's panko or just coarse, regular breadcrumbs. Two eggs. Now we're just gonna run these pieces of chicken through a basic three-stage dredging station. Make sure the flour, egg, and breadcrumbs are seasoned properly. Then dredge the chicken in the flour. Make sure it's well-coated, and then shake off the excess flour, then into the egg. Thoroughly coat the chicken in the egg, slap off any excess egg, and then it goes into the breadcrumbs. And then with the dry hand, work those breadcrumbs into the chicken, showing it lots of love. When breading chicken, you really wanna make sure it's well breaded, almost pushing the breadcrumbs into the chicken, but with thin cutlets, you need to be much more gentle or you're gonna tear them. So just flip a few times, sprinkle the breadcrumbs on top, make sure there are no wet spots or visible spots of meat, and you should have some good looking cutlets. You can already tell they're gonna be good. Now making chicken cutlets is a skill in and of itself, and I'm always in the market for new skills. So before we jump on over to the stove, let's take a minute to thank our sponsor today, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community designed to teach you new skills. 
It has thousands of classes ranging from photo and video production, design, business, graphic design, cooking, and even bartending. Whether you're a beginner or an expert, Skillshare has classes that fit your schedule and your skill level. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning that there's no ads, and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Recently, I was surprised to see that a fellow YouTuber who I admire a lot, Marquise Brownlee, has a class that he posted called YouTube Success, Scripts, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD. If you're a creator, as far as I'm concerned, this is mandatory viewing. And when I'm done with that, I'm looking forward to preparing for summer with Cocktail Secrets, making your signature drink hosted by Ivy Mix. And if I'm gonna learn how to make cocktails, who better to teach me than somebody named Mix? And right now, Skillshare is giving the first 1,000 of my subscribers who click the link down in the description a free trial to a Skillshare Premium membership. So go down, expand the description box, click the link, get your free trial today, and thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. You obviously need sauce to go with your chicken parm. And so now while we're gonna go into the stove, I might as well heat up the tomato sauce or our weekday sauce that we made in the last episode, our stuffed shells episode. So if you wanna learn how to make this, you can go watch that. I'm also gonna leave a link down to the weekday sauce video I made for this. What we're going to want is a thicker version of this just so that it acts more like a sandwich sauce rather than a pasta sauce because it's all going into a sandwich. We want it to sit a little tighter then you might want it before you toss a pasta in it. A tomato sauce could have many different thicknesses depending on what you're gonna use them for, so always keep that in mind. So I'm just going to reheat it. Get it on the stove in a really low flame and just slowly bring it up to temp. I like to make my chicken cutlets in one of these wide bottoms, straight edged, high sided saute pans and I add a blend of canola oil and olive oil. I find the more oil you use for the cutlets, the better they come out, but use as much as you're comfortable with. Heat on medium heat, and when properly preheated, add the cutlets. And when you see some browning along the edges, give them a flip. And then I like to take my metal tongs and just start splashing the oil atop the chicken cutlets to promote even browning, sort of like I'm basting it. The edges tend to brown faster and sometimes there are crevices that don't get as much color, so basting in the hot oil helps to add color to those spots. Let the chicken cool on a wire rack, season it with salt, and then continue cooking the rest of the chicken in batches. I'm also managing the heat. I usually start out high when I add the chicken cutlet and as the oil heats up faster, lower the heat as I get towards the end of that batch. And I'm always adjusting to make sure that the heat doesn't get away from me. Okay. Chicken cutlets, pretty happy with. You always wanna know they're gonna get darker as they cool in that oil. So you don't wanna take them to the exact darkness you want in the pan. You wanna have a little foresight. And like I said, you want them a little extra crispy just because we're gonna be baking them and soaking them in some sauce, so. Our sauce is done, it's hot, and it's nice and thick. Now we gotta talk about bread. I'm well aware that we're blessed in New York with very good bread, specifically Italian bread. Bread that you can't normally find necessarily everywhere. So I wanna to talk to you about what I want in a bread. This is an Italian loaf, right? It is soft, but it kinda has some structure to it. It's not completely soft and it's not completely hard. With a chicken parm, I wanna be able to bite through the bread, I want it to be tender enough to bite through, but still have body so that the sauce and the cheese and the weight of everything doesn't make the thing fall apart. I also want the bread soft enough and tender enough so that when I go to bite through it, the sandwich holds together and things don't shoot out the back. This bread seems to do the trick. When I cut it in half, it's not gonna be too bready. The proportion of bread to chicken is gonna be on point and it should hold it together nicely. I can tell just by the look of it. You can find yourself bread like this Get your hands on it, make sandwiches with it. This is what a deli would use to make a really good hero or as I call them, a wedge. What I wanna do is just heat it up and I'm gonna throw it in my toaster oven. I don't wanna get any color on it. I just kinda wanna make it seem like it's fresh baked right out of the oven so that the inside is fluffy and the outside has a nice little crisp to it. You're also gonna wanna get the broiler on at this point. I'm gonna get this out of here and then I'm gonna use this to bake the sandwich, essentially. 
So now what I want to do is basically assemble some chicken cutlets approximately the size of the bread. I like to trim the edges off the roll. Then I'm just gonna shingle three to four pieces of the chicken cutlet until it's the length of the bread, making sure I'm not adding too much chicken to the sandwich. Next, we're gonna slice up some fresh mozzarella. When I ran a food truck, I used to do this every morning with a serrated knife, slowly cutting the mozzarella as thin as possible, which was important because we got our mozz from Casa della Mozzarella. It was expensive and we needed even slices for proper portioning and food costs. So this always brings back memories. Now on top of the chicken, we're gonna grate some Parmigiano Reggiano, and then we're going to shingle the mozzarella cheese until the entire chicken cutlet is basically covered by it. You want it covered, but you also don't wanna to go too, too crazy. Now you just wanna pop that under the broiler, and we wanna melt the cheese completely, but I also wanna get those little like brown caramelized spots on the top of the mozzarella. So I'm just gonna keep moving it around, find the hot spots, and just keep turning it and cooking it until it's nicely evenly browned. Mmm, that looks good to me. It's time to cut the bread. I don't want to cut it on this side. I want to cut it along this curved side. It's going to make the sandwich look a little better. Don't cut all the way through, just about 90% of the way. Then we're going to go with just a, a nice couple spoonfuls, an even layer of that tomato sauce on the bottom of the roll. Then we're going to transfer the chicken cutlets from the sheet tray into the sandwich, and if we measured it right, it should just fit perfectly right in there. If there's a little overhang, no worries. Then some tomato sauce on top of the cheese. It's gonna help prevent the chicken from getting soggy, and then finish it off with some fresh basil. Notice the sandwich structure. Is anything falling apart? Can you take a bite with one hand? And yeah, you may get some chicken cutlet hanging off the edge. That's just your first bite. And then that helps to contain the sandwich. Thin cutlets, so even though you're stacking them, it doesn't seem like too much. Not too much sauce so that it's super wet and it compromises the structure of the bread. Everything is nicely packaged. That's what makes a good sandwich. You still get the texture of the crisp, even though it's kind of been sitting for a while and it's got sauce all over it. Mm -hmm. As you can see, a joyous eating experience. Everything stays together, flavor's there, texture's there, the bread is right, everything's right. Go make this right now. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.